so basically this is a workflow engine uh, but that doesn't say much because the word workflow itself is pretty overloaded and it can mean different things to different people there are many software solutions out there that manage uh, typically some kind of business process and call themselves workflow today i don't think we'll have a lot of time to go into the specifics here but i'll try to go over a high level use case and uh, that should explain why we think what we're doing here is important and useful um let's consider a scenario where a user checks out a product it is a simplified version where the user is checking out a single product here uh so this is a standard microservice based architecture where we have the inventory service order and email service the logic is straightforward uh it checks the item if the item is available in the inventory if it is available then it deducts the item from the inventory creates an order and finally sends out a confirmation email to the user everything looks good so far unless something goes wrong so what happens if the machine that is running the code goes wrong goes down and if that happens particularly after a critical step like deducting the item from the inventory the system ends up of being in an inconsistent state and generally to solve something like this we maintain the state in another replicated database the state needs to be updated frequently based on the actions performed inside this transaction uh but even then there are things that can still go wrong what happens if the state updation operation itself fails and then there is inconsistency between the actual state of the system and what is there in the db that can be quite a messy situation also there are other kinds of failures like uh, api call failure that happens pretty often and we try to work around that by typically introducing a queue where we can keep retrying the request that has failed periodically but that is just one more system that we have to maintain and uh, we can see how the complexity is quickly rising here just trying to make this whole system resilient and then if the api call failure here is permanent due to some reason for example in this scenario maybe this particular user is not allowed to buy this product so it is not going to go through no matter how many times we retry at that point we have to actually go back and roll back the steps that have happened just before the point of failure uh these compensation steps need to be carried out and if one of these compensation steps also fails then probably we need to manually interfere here uh and fix things up but it's it can be quite difficult to figure out the exact step where the failure has occurred because there are so many states being maintained across different dbs and actually you have to go in there and compare the states between with uh, different databases and back them out cleanly then there is also another kind of tasks that i have not had a chance to mention in this particular scenario but that comes up quite often um like the jobs that have long waiting period for example there are cron jobs that need to run daily or monthly and it can be hard to support such long waiting periods in applications what we've seen through this checkout example is uh, what started out as a simple enough use case somehow snowballs into this huge problem while we try to make the system reliable and re resilient and for that we end up having to write and maintain thousands of lines of code and then something like this happens when the product manager comes in requesting a small feature change practically speaking uh, microservice architecture introduces an inevitable problem just by definition because the state of the system needs to be uh, distributed across different services and with every call to an external service we have to write several lines of checks and uh, ensure that nothing fails in the middle of a transaction and even then it is practically impossible to avoid data loss or race condition and write bug free code so this costs developers their time and energy and costs employers lots of money and 
needless to say, the code that comes out of this is complex and convoluted. And we can never tell for sure if a change we make in our code will not blow up something, some other service downstream later on. And this is where Zeoflow comes in. Uh, we believe that Zeoflow gives an elegant and easy way to make distributed systems more reliable. It is distributed, fault tolerant, persistent computation out of the box. And as a developer, you can just focus on writing the core business logic without worrying about all those edge cases that we just saw. And that is our value proposition. Uh, look at the code here. This is what the actual code for this checkout use case covering all the failure scenarios looks like in Zeoflow. Uh, we put everything that needs to happen atomically inside this transaction block. And you can see that there are no gory details here. There is no retry logic or uh, uh, checking of states or trying to persist something into a DB. We don't see anything like that. It's just pure orchestration microservices and that's it. We'll take a quick look at the high level architecture of uh, Zeoflow. Here we have a service component and along with the database that is responsible for maintaining the persistent state. And then there is the client side DSL. The code snippet that we just saw that was written in this DSL. Um, in conclusion, I think right now, many of us think of a specific type of problem as a workflow problem, maybe a recurring job that is not mission critical. But I'd urge you to think more because the more we think about it, the more everything starts to look like a workflow. Many problems that are being solved today in a custom way, uh, I feel can benefit from a platform like Zeoflow. And if you're interested in learning more or contributing, please check out the GitHub repository at zeo slash zeoflow. And feel free to contact me or John if you're unsure where to start or if you have questions. Thank you. Thank you.